कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभ नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधा शिवा सदे गौर भक्तव्य हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी कंटिन्यूइंग टू स्पीक फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो सेवन चैप्टर सेवन टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी नाइन डस एनीवन रिमेंबर द मेन पॉइंट ऑफ यस्टरडे Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The main point yesterday we understood that unless one understands Krishna and comes to Krishna consciousness, one must continue in this conditional life, material bondages. And to end this, we should surrender to Krishna, and then He will deliver us. And then Prahlad Maharaj also made us understand that how the body causes all the suffering. So by association of devotees and guru, one can revive his original. consciousness and chaitanya mahaprabhu's mission for everyone is that to become krishna conscious and give to everyone so that everyone can be awake from the dream situation that they are into and go back to godhead and then you also like bhakti vinod thakur also stresses that wake up o sleeping soul jeev jago jeev and only by the mercy of the lord we can wake up and come out of this dreaming situation and in the last one also there was this um, the conclusion because it is written atev therefore so prahlad maharaj was giving the conclusion to his demon friends that it follow your duty and wake up and accept krishna consciousness because that is only 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 devotional service is only the way so like how we are into this uh, ignorance and we should get over it and just involve in krishna consciousness and revive our relationship with krishna yeah thank you krishna. yeah prahlad maharaj was saying it's our duty to engage in krishna consciousness so we'll continue text 29 tatro paya sahasra naam tatro paya sahasra naam yam bhagavato dita ईश्वरे भगवती ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पज बाय श्रीवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्लोक रूपर of the different processes recommended for disentanglement from material life um the one personally explained and accepted by the supreme personality of god it should be considered all perfect that process is the performance of duties by which love for the supreme lord develops among the linking processes that elevate one from bondage to material contamination the one recommended by the supreme personality should be accepted as the best so pralad maharaj is saying, sorry i don't know what this i there, is there some disturbance yes. 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 Yeah. yes 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 uh, i don't know what what is that i think no, you can turn our uh, mics off only turn on when we want to speak okay thank you all right i sound some seems better thanks so pulad maharaj is saying that there are different processes by which we can get liberation but now he saying the best process is that one which is personally recommended by krishna so what is krishna saying that process is clearly explained in bhagavad gita where the lord says sarva dharmam parityagya mam ekam sharanam raja abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me this is the this process is the best because the lord assures aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshi shami ma sucha i shall deliver you from all sinful reaction do not fear 
So that's why this is the best process, surrender to Krishna. Because Krishna is saying, I will take care of you. You know, in the other processes of karma or gyan or dhyan, one has to depend on one's own ability. And we are insignificant. What is our ability after all? But in bhakti, we are depending on Krishna. One depends on Krishna. Krishna is saying, I will take care of you. And Krishna is unlimited. What can stop Krishna to do when Krishna wants to do something? No one, nothing can stop him. So there is no need to be worried for the Lord himself assures that he will care for his devotee and save him from the reactions of sinful activities. Material bondage is a result of sinful activity. Therefore, since the Lord assures that he will dissipate the results of fruitive material activities, there is no need to be worried. So, we, we suffer. Why do we suffer? Because of the ignorance that we are the body we think. Yeah, because of ignorance. Then from ignorance, because of ignorance, how do we act? Because of ignorance, we do a lot of uh, karmakand and uh, paap because sinful we don't know activity. what is right. Sinful activity. That's right. right. So because of sinful activity, what do we get? Paap. Paap. That's right. Sinful reaction. So then, now, Krishna is saying, he will take away all our sinful reaction. He will take away all our Karma. There's no need to worry. It's Krishna's promise. So this process of understanding one's position as a spirit soul and then engaging oneself in devotional service is therefore the best. The entire Vedic program is best based on this principle. And one can understand it as recommended in the Vedas. Yasya deve para bhakti yatha deve tatha guru tasyai te kathitha e artha Prakashante Mahatmana unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master. All the imports of Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed. Shvetashvatara Upanishad 6.23 So one who has implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master, then one can realize this knowledge. So I'm reading this book about one devotee called Nandini Devi Dasi. She was there in the early or in the movement in ISKCON, in the very early days. In those days, ISKCON was just beginning and the, the devotees were all living in the temple, in the temples. And the temples didn't have much money. You know, mostly all the temples were barely had any money. So she was also in one such temple. But she was in charge of, uh, she was the pujari and she had to make the offering, the offering of fruit and fruit drink to the Lord, an evening offering. So there were no fruit, there was only some limes. So what she did, she made a drink out of the lime, she cut up some lime, put some sugar and she made the offering to the Lord. And at the same time, mentally, she offered a big variety of fruit, like a fruit buffet, you know, fruit salad, fruit, fruit buffet to the Lord. Mentally, she offered. And while she was offering, just when she was finishing, she was hearing a lot of noise coming and going out, coming and going out. After she finished the offering, she saw what? She saw that somebody had donated boxes and boxes of fruits, apples, oranges, grapes, uh, peaches, different variety of fruit. So she had that faith both in Krishna and Srila Prabhupada that we offer food to Krishna with love and devotion, Krishna accepts. Yeah, amazing devotee. So... And this is what Shwateshwatara Upanishad is also saying, that one who has implicit faith in both the spiritual master and the Supreme Lord, 
one can realize this knowledge. So one must accept the pure devotee, the representative of God as one's guru and then offer him all the respects one would offer the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the secret of success. For one who adopts this method, the perfect process is revealed. So uh, offering all the respect to the spiritual master as one would offer the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So one may say, oh, how to understand? So we can understand. For example, we have the ambassador, Indian ambassador in Taiwan. He's representing the Indian president, Indian prime minister. He has the, all the powers entrusted him in him by the Indian government. And then we respect him as the, as the Indian highest authority. So similarly, the spiritual master is the representative of God over here in the material world. So that's how we can understand. So in these words, the words yer anjasarati indicate that by offering service and surrendering to the spiritual master, one is elevated to devotional service. And by performing devotional service, one gradually becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we have to get attached to Krishna. Right now we are attached to the material world. We have to get attached to Krishna. So how to get attached to Krishna? By surrendering to the spiritual master, by engaging in devotional service. Uh, Lord Kapila Dev also says in his Kapila Shiksha in third canto of Bhagavatam that he's, when he's giving knowledge to his mother Devahuti that get attached to the devotee. To get attached to Krishna, get attached to the devotee. So attached to the devotee means following the instructions, surrendering to the spiritual master. So because of this attachment to the Lord, one can understand the Lord. So this is what is needed. We say, oh, I want to be detached. But rather the correct thing to want is to be attached to Krishna. Attached to Krishna. We, we can't truly be detached from any, like we, we are still going to be attached to something. So the, the correct, so Detached from the material world and where to put the attachment? Attachment to Krishna. So in other words, one can understand what the Lord's position is, what our position is, and what our relationship is. So what is the Lord's position and what's our position and what's our relationship? That is Sambandha Gyan. The Sambandha. All this can be understood very easily by the simple method of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is the Abhideya actually. Yeah. So as soon as one is situated on the platform of Bhakti Yoga, the root cause of one's suffering and material bondage is destroyed. This is clearly explained in the next verse which gives the secret of success. So we are suffering, we don't want to suffer we want to get free from this material world. So the answer is bhakti, devotional service. Devotional service is the process and also the goal. It's a process to help us get rid of the suffering. Also the goal because it's the eternal activity of the soul. It's the sanatana dharma. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll go on to the next one. Guru Shushru Shaya Bhaktiya. Guru Shushru Shaya Bhaktiya. Sarva Labdhar Pane Nacha. Sarva Labdhar Pane Nacha. Sange Na Sadhu Bhaktanam. Sangeena Sadhu Bhaktanam Ishwara Ishwara Radha 
ಶಾರ್ಹನಾ one must accept the bona fide spiritual master and render service unto him with great devotion and faith whatever one has in one's possession should be offered to the spiritual master and in the association of saintly persons and devotees one should worship the lord hear the glories of the lord with faith glorify the transcendental qualities and activities of the lord always meditate on the lord's lotus feet and worship the deity of the lord strictly according to the injunctions of the shastra and guru so here prabhupada this saying this is the secret of the success of how to uh, uh, what to do so this is what what to be doing finally because prahlad maharaj has been giving so much knowledge now he's saying finally what to do so in the previous verse it has been said that the process which immediately increases one's love and affection for the supreme personality of godhead is the best of the many thousands of ways to become free from the entanglement of material existence it is also said dharmasya tatva nihitam guhaya actually the truth of religious principles is extremely confidential nonetheless it can be understood very easily if one actually adopts the principle of religion so you know it can be very confusing to understand what actually religion is that's why we have to understand from the pure devotee if we were to understand by ourselves we would be like completely confused like we, we we when we are students we study some text we always need the guidance of a teacher you know to explain to us but we were to study the text by ourselves wouldn't understand much so it is as it is said dharma dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam the process of religion is enunciated by the supreme lord because he is the supreme authority dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam only god can lay down religious principles nobody else this is also indicated in the previous verse by the word bhagavato dita the injunctions or directions of the lord are infallible and their benefits are fully assured because the lord is infallible so his instructions are infallible he he we we get the defects we get the four defects but not the lord so according to he is perfect always perfect so his instructions are always perfect according to his directions which are explained in this verse the perfect form of religion is bhakti yoga to practice bhakti yoga one must first accept a bona fide spiritual master shla rupa goswami and his bhakti rasamrit sindhu 1 to 74 to 75 advices guru pada shrayas tasmat krishna diksha adi shikshanam vishram vena guru seva sadhu vartaman vartamanu vartanam sat dharma pracha bhoga de tyaga krishna sya hetave one's first duty is to accept a bona fide spiritual master means to hear from him you know? hearing from the bona fide spiritual master the student or disciple should be very inquisitive he should be eager to know the complete truth about eternal religion sanatan dharma what is the sanatan dharma and it's only the spiritual master who can teach us this the words guru shushrushaya mean that one should personally serve the spiritual master by giving him bodily comforts helping him in bathing 
dressing, sleeping, eating and so on. This is called Guru Shushrushana. A disciple should serve the spiritual master as a menial servant. And whatever he has in his possession should be dedicated to the spiritual master. So service to the spiritual master uh, can be done in two ways. Here is mentioned about the vapu, helping the physical body of the spiritual master. And when that is not possible, or most of the times it may not be possible, then to follow the instruction of the spiritual master, Vani, following the instructions, that is service also. So, Praner Arther Diya Vacha, everyone has his life, his wealth, his intelligence and his words, and all of them should be offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the medium of spiritual master. So we say, hey, it's my life, my wealth. My intelligence, my words, why should I give it? But we have to understand that because we are saying it's mine, that's why we are still here in the material world. Until the time we continue to say it's mine, we are going to continue to be in the material world. So we may not be able to completely surrender, not completely, but at least how much ever we can. We begin somewhere, somewhere we begin. Offer whatever we have to the Supreme Lord through the spiritual master because he can teach us how to make this offering. Everything should be offered to the spiritual master as a matter of duty. But the offering should be made to the spiritual master with heart and soul, not artificially to gain material prestige. This offering is called arpan. So sincerity, being sincere. Moreover, one should live among devotees, saintly persons, to learn the etiquette and proper behavior of devotional service. So, association with the devotees. Shla Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur remarks in this connection that whatever is offered to the spiritual master should be offered with love and affection, not for material adoration. Because we may think, okay, let me offer this, then the spiritual master will praise me or may give me some kind of a high position or something. But it should be done out of love, out of affection. Similarly, it is recommended that one associate with devotees, but there must be some discrimination. Actually, a sadhu, a saintly person, must be saintly in his behavior. Sadhava sadachara. Unless one adheres to the standard behavior, One's position as a sadhu, a saintly person, is not complete. So sadhacha. A sadhu has a, a saintly person. He has some qualities. And tolerance, humility, forgiveness. So there are so many other qualities. Therefore, a Vaishnava sadhu must completely adhere to the standard of behavior. Slavishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that a Vaishnava person initiated into the Vaishnava cult should be offered the respect befitting a Vaishnava, which means that he should be offered service and prayers. However, one should not associate with him if he's not a fit person with whom to associate. So, association is needed, association of the sadhu, of the devotees is needed, but here Prabhupada is mentioning that one who is actually behavior, behaving as a sadhu and one whose behavior is questionable, then that association should be avoided. Any comments? I, I didn't get this last line, what you were saying. If the association the sadhu is so sadhu a Vaishnava yeah. he, his behavior he should have that standard behavior you know how tolerance, mercy, forgiveness um, all those qualities that humility. are mentioned humility, humility. yeah right. Okay. so that's a position now 
Shila Vishwana Chakrabarti Thakur is saying that we should give all respect to such a person, you know, pure devotee who has all these qualities because he's a pure devotee. That's why he has all these great qualities. But now if one's behavior is not proper, then one should not associate avoid. with him. Not associate. Avoid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm. Hare Krishna. Okay. I just wanted to share a story in the context like how we should uh, not speculate. So Narottam Das Thakur, who's the whose guru is Lokanath Thakur, he was uh, meditating and he was meditating and then he saw Radharani, a small girl, and then he knew that it was Radharani. And he said that, how can I serve you? And then she said that, okay, uh, there is this Champaka Lata Sakhi of mine. And she does the milk seva. So she brings the boiling milk to me so you can help her. And he, he is named Champaka Manjari also, Narutam Das Thakur. So um, he got very excited because it's, Radharani himself, herself in front of him and giving the instructions. So he's doing the Manaseva. But then he went back to his guru, Lokanath Swami. And he told him the whole incident. And then he took instructions from him too. It was not that, you know, he just got, oh, I've got the direct instructions from Radharani now. And now, you know, now guru and nothing is needed. So then he asked Radharani that, should I serve my guru or... Uh, what should I do? So he, she said that, no, you should serve your guru. That is so like, um, sometimes it is just that uh, we get very excited and we speculate about things. So, but even we should learn from these great gurus who are telling us what is the right attitude? What is the right way? So that makes a lot of change in us when we get to know that. Oh, because he himself was such a high position. So, yes, we learn from them a lot that we should respect Guru no matter what and no speculate. Thank yeah, thank you. Yeah. You mean follow the etiquette, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, following the etiquette, yes. Thank you. That is needed. Yasya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasado, Yasya Prasada, Nagati Kutopi. Shla Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says, by pleasing the spiritual master, one pleases Krishna. That's how to actually please Krishna. This is what exactly Prahlad Maharaj is saying here now. So thank you for that. And moving on. Hari Sarveshu Bhute Shu. Hari Sarveshu Bhute Shu. Bhagavan Asta Ishvara. Bhagavan Manasa. Iti Kamaste Sadhu One should always remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his localized representation as the Paramatma, who is situated in the core of every living entity's heart. Thus, one should offer respect to every living entity according to that living entity's position or manifestation. Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu, this statement is sometimes misunderstood by unscrupulous persons who wrongly conclude that because Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is situated in every living entity, every living entity is therefore Hari. Such foolish persons do not distinguish between the Atma and the Paramatma who are situated in every body. So here Prabhupada is explaining that uh, Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu is written. So now, what people say that everyone has become God. No, we have to understand not everyone has become God. But that in the heart of everyone, Paramatma is also there. The Atma is there, the Paramatma is there. The Atma, the living entity, and the Paramatma is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
the individual living entity, however, is different from the Paramatma, the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu means that Hari is situated as Paramatma, not as Atma, although Atma is a part of Paramatma. Is that okay? Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, offering respect to every living entity means offering respect to the Paramatma situated in every living entity. One should not misunderstand every living entity to be the Paramatma. Sometimes, unscrupulous persons designate a living entity as Daridra Narayan, Swami Narayan, this Narayan, or that Narayan. One should clearly understand that although Narayan is situated in the core of the heart of every living entity, the living entity never becomes Narayan. So the living entity always remains the living entity. Narayan always remains Narayan. Can never become. We never become God. We just have to understand we are part and parcel of God. That's our constitutional position. Evam nirjita sadvarge. Evam nirjita sadvarge. Kriyate Bhakti Rishwari. Kriyate Bhakti Vasudeve Bhagavati. Vasudeve Bhagavati. Yaya Samlabhyate Rati. Yaya Samlabhyate Rati. By these activities, as mentioned above, one is able to cut down the influence of the enemies. Namely, lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, and jealousy. And when one thus situated, one can render service to the Lord. In this way, one surely attains the platform of loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So who are the enemies? We think this one is my enemy and that one is my enemy. But who is actually the enemy? ourselves if we are in lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness or jealousy. Yeah, yeah. These qualities are actually the enemies. As mentioned in verses 30 and 31, one's first duty is to approach the spiritual master, the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to begin rendering service to him. Prahlad Maharaj proposed that from the very beginning of life, Kaumara Acharit Pragya, a small child should be trained to serve the spiritual master while living at the Gurukul. Brahmachari Gurukule Vasan Danto Guru Hitam Bhagavatam 7.12.1 This is the beginning of spiritual life. Guru Padashraya Sadhu Vartha Manu Vartanam Sadharma Pracha By following the instructions of the Guru and the Shastras, the disciple attains the stage of devotional service and becomes unattached to possessions. So coming to the point of pure devotional service with complete faith in Guru and Krishna. So, but this, this stage may not be able to achieve immediately, but gradually, gradually we can increase our faith. You no, know, we may not immediately have implicit faith. So whatever he possesses, he offers to the spiritual master, the guru, who engages him in Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. The disciple follows strictly and in this way learns how to control his senses. So following the order of the spiritual master. Now this, the, the spiritual master, what, did, what does he want? He just engages the disciple in devotional service. That is the service of the spiritual master. He's doing the service on behalf of Krishna to engage the souls in devotional service. So the disciple follows strictly and in this way learns how to control his senses. Then by using his pure intelligence, he gradually becomes a lover of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as confirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami. Adav Shada Tatha Sadhu Sangha. 
So we do sadhu sangha, sadhu put us in bhajana kriya, bhajana kriya, hearing and chanting. We begin hearing and chanting, brings about anartha nivriti, the contaminations go away. Then gradually, gradually comes to uh, implicit faith, firm faith, steady faith. And then from there, one can proceed to taste and attachment. And then, of course, bhava, emotion, and then love. In this way, one's life becomes perfect, and his attachment for Krishna becomes positively manifested. In that stage, he's situated in ecstasy, experiencing bhava and anubhava, as explained in the following verse. Is this okay? Yes. How from yeah, how from slight faith, just slight faith, one begins to associate with the devotees and engages in hearing and chanting and can come to perfection. So he also the intelligence comes, right? The power yeah. of intelligence. Yes. <laughs> we studied and... we read yesterday. Yeah. The, yeah. And the purified mm. intelligence. And Krishna purified, says yes. that. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that to those who are constantly devoted to serving him with love, he gives the intelligence by which they can come to me, he says. So Krishna gives us this purified intelligence. If he sees someone is sincere, en sincerely engaged in devotional service, Krishna gives the intelligence by which one can go back to him. Yeah. So we we do the effort and then Krishna gives the mercy. So shall we stop here for today? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhattavrinda